All right, I just thought I would show a little video of my flood coolant device that I added onto my lathe. And I haven't got it wired yet. I just got it kind of shoved into the end of the extension cord there. But basically what it is, I'm using a trash can for the return tank. And that pump right there is a discharge pump from out of a uh, old dishwasher. Now a lot of times when a dishwasher goes bad and it's replaced, <clears throat> it's because the discharge pump isn't emptying the uh, unit out. And a lot of times it's because that pump is bad or it's going bad. But believe it or not, Many times the pump is good, but the line is clogged up with grease because people put dishes in there that have a lot of grease on them, and that line is kind of small on the inside, and it fills up with grease, and it clogs up, and they really don't need a new dishwasher. They just need that line cleaned out. Anyhow, I adapted the pump. It had already had that... Uh, black hose on there with the two hose clamps so I didn't have to buy that but a little piece of PVC pipe half inch PVC pipe and a connector and then I bored a hole right into the side of this little trash can that I picked up at Walmart that trash can holds five and a half gallons and it sits pretty nice up underneath the lathe there I got the return line comes out right here under the lathe goes down and just dumps right back in there I'll probably make a lid for it and I'll probably drop a couple magnets down in the bottom to pick up any metal shavings that might end up down there anyway it's a great way to set up a system for a lot probably a lot less money than a than a system would cost if you had to buy it I think the pumps are pretty expensive because most of the pumps are submersible pump. That's not a submersible pump. But the way I've got it hooked up, it will work pretty good. So this particular pump, being a used pump, it's a little bit noisy. But I can deal with that. Anyway, here's the return right there. And I got a screen inside of here. Sitting right on top of here to kind of screen out the metal shavings. And I got four just... um magnets sitting there to hold that down so the metal shavings pretty much all get stopped right here before they ever even get down to where they fall through and go down into the you know return tank i could have used the existing hose that came with that pump but the hose that's on on the dishwasher pump is a little bit more rigid than what I really wanted I wanted something that would was more flexible and I kind of wanted something that was clear that I could see the solution in it as it you know came on up there so I could kind of make see that the pump was pumping anyway I just made this little bracket right here a piece of uh, mild steel shot a couple holes in there and screwed it down to an old magnetic base that I had that's kind of not working as well as I'd like it to but the magnetic base is old it's kind of wore out I, I really need a new one a new one would work better it's just it's not as strong as what it was when it was new so but I mean it, it does hold it there I also put this needle valve on here now these needle valves I bought that at Lowe's and when you buy that needle valve, it comes as a compression, a compression style fitting. And that's compression nut that's on the end of the needle valve. And it's actually made to, to go on copper pipeline and compress down on there. Or this type of hose in that size can slide up on there and be a compression style fitting. But... I didn't really want that type of setup. I wanted something more rigid. So what I did, I took this off, and this is a uh, seven sixteenths 
by 24 thread which is a kind of an oddball size thread uh, normally a 7 16 is 14 threads or 20 threads per inch this is uh, 24 which is kind of an oddball thread but and they wanted right much money for the tap. I found the tap at Granger, but they wanted $131 for the darn tap. And I didn't, you know, why would I spend $131 for a tap just to do that? So anyway, what I did, I took a, I took a small pipe thread tap that was close to the same size. I believe it's a 1827. No, I'm not saying that right. One eight something. I I can't remember what it was though. But anyway, it threaded right up on there. I mean, it cut new threads right over top of the old threads, and basically wiped the old threads pretty much out as it was doing it, cause it's just brass, and cut a, a really nice thread on on there. So I cut a thread on both ends, and then I put a reducer on there to step it up to this coupling right here and then from the coupling I put the hose barb and then on the other side I just um, took it on into a uh, 90 and then I came out of that 90 with this flexible line right here and I picked this up at uh, WW Granger and um, it works real good and like I said the pump is a little bit noisy. I'll go ahead and pump, plug it in. You can hear it. Now you can see you can see it running up through there now. It's light coming out. Right there. And um, I always use an extra chip paint in the bottom of my lathe. Because it just makes it a little bit easier to clean the chips out. But anyway, I turn this little knob over here, and you can see it turns the flow down. It'll turn it down to a drip. And then turn it on back up. Turn it on up higher if you want to. And that makes it nice to be adjustable like that. But anyway, on my chip pan down here, I always keep this chip pan in because chips accumulate in there they, they you know they fall right down through this crack and they hit this chip pan and all this chip pan is is uh it's a it's a baker's pan from out of the oven that you use in your oven in the house and uh, i bored a hole right here in the corner right there it's got a little hole right there and so the fluid comes in runs out of that hole and uh, then it just runs right on down and boom right on through there so um, very little of it goes up to this end. There is a little bit up there, but for the most part, it stays pretty dry up there, so far anyway. And uh, that flows right on down and goes on out. The main reason I did that, put this system on here, is because although I, I like this dark thread cutting wool, it's uh it works great and it you know it, it leaves a real nice finish and everything but after so long of being in front of that thing smelling that smoke coming off of that, it, that the smoke just irritates my throat and uh you know i'm just kind of getting tired of smelling that stuff so um i probably will still use the thread the uh cutting oil um, when I need it the main reason why I went with this flood coolant system is for knurling um, when you're knurling I have found that it, it helps to have like a flood coolant on there to get rid of the uh, you really can't call them chips but when you're doing knurl and you, you end up with some some metal because it, you're actually forming the metal but you end up with some metal flakes it, it like flakes off and you really need a flood coolant to wash those flakes away so that was the main purpose of me putting you know the flood coolant on there was for, for knurling 
and um, so you know I probably still will use the uh, you know the uh, cutting oil from time to time or I you know I mean I might may, may use it a lot I don't know it depends on how much mess this makes if, if I can um, I may have to build a shield to go around this because when you're cutting up close to the chuck it just slings out of there and it get it uh, you know it gets all over you and it gets all over the floor and if I can build me a plastic shield to go across there maybe something out of plexiglass like I put this piece of plexiglass right there it goes around the motor I've had that on there for a while it shields the motor to keep the because uh, the motor you know it's right up underneath there and basically what it does it keeps chips out of the motor and off the motor and keeps cutting solution off the motor and all that kind of stuff and, um, I did have this actual thing set up right here it's an old vacuum cleaner and it's located on the other side of this wall and it clamps up here and I could turn that on and it would actually suck the smoke out and so I wouldn't have to breathe it so much but I got tired of hearing that darn thing run over there I put it on the other side of the wall so it'd be a little bit quieter so it is a little bit quieter but it also sucks all the heat out of the building too so and that kind of sucks because it gets cold in here especially with you know working with metal metal gets cold and it it, it just radiates cold off of it you know so anyway i saw i share this video some of you guys out there that um, has lathes that don't have a flood coolant system this is a pretty neat way to actually get into a system relatively cheap i think that trash can right there i didn't really pay it much for it i got it at walmart and uh you know i might have paid four bucks for it and um i think i think this thing right here was only like a couple of bucks at granger and uh the brass fittings and this line right here about 20 feet of this line and the brass fittings and everything i think that was like 40 bucks um so you know I don't know exactly how much I got in it. Probably if I look and see how much I got in it, I probably find out I could have bought a system cheaper. Maybe I don't know. I've, I've never really priced the system, so I really don't know. You know how much they are, or how much it would have cost me to, you know, to buy a system and put it on here. But I had a very similar system to this on the other side on my 17-inch tornado that I built. Um, you know, not not the lathe i didn't build a lathe but i had a similar um coolant system set up over there uh that i put together but over there i used a submersible pump and i bought the submersible pump from um, northern hydraulics and i think i paid like 45 bucks for the pump so at the very least if you can find an old dishwasher and pull that pump out it'll save you about 45 bucks you know it's not submersible but all I did was bore a hole in the side and put some JB weld on there and I roughed it up and put the JB weld on there and it, it's holding good I mean it's not leaking or anything like that still got to wire this thing though look at that plugs right into the extension cord but I'll probably put a receptacle on the side of the pole, something like that. But seems to be working pretty good. Anyway, really haven't done a whole lot of cutting with it, but I've cut with flood coolant before. All it is is uh, it's soluble oil, and try to find a container if I can locate it. Oh, there it is, right there. That way you can know what I'm using there. I got this at Napa, and uh, it's a Napa cutting and grinding oil, and it's water soluble, and it has the, um, you know, as long as it says soluble on there, that's what you want, and it said, you know, it has the information on the back as to how to, you know, 
mix it and um, I mix this uh, one to ten one part of water to ten parts of water which is you know which is a little rich for you know general machining but a drill press is supposed to be one to ten and so you do do a lot of drilling on the lathe so that's why I chose that number anyway hope you enjoyed the video and um, if any of you guys make one I make a video I'd love to see it all right have a good day